My name is Buddy Teaster, and I'm the CEO at Souls for Souls. Souls for Souls is a not-for-profit social enterprise, and we really do two things. We help people find opportunities by repurposing shoes and clothes. Some of those we give away for free to people in need, and we do that all around the world. And some we sell to people in the developing world primarily as a way for them to create a small business or a job so that they can earn their way out of poverty. One of the most exciting things that's happened recently is Souls for Souls was named to the National Retail Federation Foundation's 25 People Changing Retail, which was a big deal for us since we're not really a retailer. As we learn more about how the NRF thought about why we were in that category, it's that we offer a lot of retailers a way to give back. And sometimes that's very direct by engaging the consumer. Sometimes it's more indirect by them repurposing their inventory. But retailers more and more are pushed and driven by their customers to have a purpose and to talk about what they stand for in addition to just selling product. And we can often help them tell a bigger story that connects with their consumers. And we were lucky that the NRF recognized that. So one of the things about Souls for Souls as a social enterprise, we are not-for-profit, but at the same time, we earn about 70% of our revenue from running a travel program. That's an experiential way for people to give back and also by selling shoes to people in the developing world. So the tension, the great tension really, between how do we think like a business and run responsibly while staying really true to our purpose, I think is one of the best things about what I get to do. And I think it keeps Souls for Souls really kind of honest in that we have to deliver what our constituents want. And that might mean a woman in Haiti, she can call up and say, these shoes aren't what I wanted. And for her, that is often one of the few times that she has sort of an equal relationship with someone instead of just being on the receiving end of charity. She's now a business owner, an entrepreneur, and she can say, I need this, and we have to respond to her. So it keeps us honest, keeps us focused on what she needs, and it gives her agency in a way that is really beautiful to see in action. So our model for supporting entrepreneurs is, I think, one of the most unique things about Souls for Souls. Part of what I really love about the organization is we collect this year about four and a half million pairs of shoes. About two thirds of those were used and a third were new. And all the used shoes and some of the new when we have permission from the donor, the manufacturer, the retailer, we sell to people in the developing world. And we usually have a partner on the ground who knows the community. So often that organization is maybe doing education or nutrition or job training or after school programs. And we sell to that organization because they know the community, they know the language, they know the culture. and. Our commitment is how do we help them identify entrepreneurs who want an opportunity, who are already willing and demonstrated they're able to work really hard, but they don't have many opportunities to actually get ahead. Turns out that shoes and clothes often are a really tremendous way out. So what we've done really wherever we can is how do we take the middlemen out of all that so that the most of that final sales price stays in the entrepreneur's hand. And when we get the money in her hands, that's when great things happen. She invested in her family, whether that's housing, education, food, medical care, she knows what to do. We just provide better quality product at a better price. I mean, sort of retail 101 in many ways. With people who don't look like retailers, but act that way, they're fierce marketers and business people often, even though they might not be able to read or write, they understand how to sell. And they're living on the edge in many cases. And so when they get a little bit ahead, a little bit of money, it can transform not just their lives, but their kids and grandkids. On the travel side, we also offer people an opportunity to do more than just go someplace, right? They get to be involved in a hands-on way with service work. Often that's putting shoes on people's feet, so that's a very direct connection to what we do. But most importantly, it's a way to connect with other people, to see them, to recognize them, to spend time with them, and give them a window into our culture and vice versa. And time after time really happens is the person who travels comes back more changed than the people who were there. The travel program is about a million dollar program for us, so it's, it's really important from a revenue perspective. And we have the same challenges that any sort of online marketer has. We have to identify the right kind of audiences. So for us, we've gotten really good at identifying times of year like spring break. That's a good alternative now for people who don't want to go to the beach, they want to do a service trip. Families want to travel together maybe over the holidays. So we're starting to identify times and groups. We're also doing a lot of customized travel. It might be with a university or a company who wants to do something more than a retreat.
almost all of our marketing is online. So we're doing things like Google AdWords and Facebook ads. We have a lot of direct mail and email also incorporated in that. So that part of our business looks like a lot of other retailers who are trying to figure out how do we blend a story about an experience and tell that story digitally so people will click on it and sign up for us. It's a big decision for a lot of people to be gone for five days. We have people who travel with us who have never left the country. So for them to go from I never left the country to I want to go to Central America or Haiti or India is a big step. And helping them understand that journey is really important part of what we can do. And then, as I said, they come back more changed than anybody that they meet. I don't think about Souls for Souls as an e-commerce platform. We certainly have some aspects of that. People donate to us online. So we've got to really understand that process and what that looks like. But really, I think about what we do more and more as really two things. We're a way to tell stories. And so more and more, how do we become a content company and bring those stories back from people in Haiti or Honduras or Zambia and bring them back to people who don't know those places and those stories. And then we enable it maybe with, I wanna make a donation or I wanna travel or I wanna donate my shoes. So I really think about us not so much as an e-commerce company, but as a content company. Growth for Souls for Souls has been an interesting thing to think about. And, you know, the things that are easy to count, we do. How many shoes we collect, how many pieces of apparel we collect, how much we keep out of landfills, we track all that. But we really tried to focus on how do we grow in terms of our economic impact. So we have a metric about what product goes through which channel and how much impact it has in the country where we're selling it and the people we're selling it to. And that has become our sort of true north. And we have really focused on that. So our goal is to be at a billion dollars in economic impact by 2030. And so we've grown from last year, it was 30 million to this year, 50 million. So for us, that's a big deal. And our effort really has to be, how do we continue to grow that? We have to get better at collecting shoes and clothes and getting people to support us financially, all in support of how do we have more and more impact in the places that we're working. marketing is a retailer or a manufacturer tying their commercial efforts to a cause so that when people take a certain action it benefits a certain organization or it has an impact on a certain cause. Cause marketing for Souls for Souls is increasingly important and I have a, two really I think great examples of how that's worked because it wasn't this sort of made-up campaign it came from these two companies customers. So one is Zappos. Their shoe company is an obvious fit but they and DSW has become an amazing partner. Both of them had customers who said, can you help us solve the problem of what do we do with our used shoes? Both of these companies said, well, we should go find somebody that can help us solve this problem. So Zappos now enables all of their customers to print out a label, they put it on a box of shoes or clothes, and send it back to Souls for Souls and they pay for the shipping. It's a big financial commitment, it's a big logistical commitment, and it has generated millions of pairs of shoes and pieces of clothing in the last few years. About a year and a half ago, DSW started doing something similar in stores. And as everyone knows, getting people into the store is a harder and harder job for retailers. DSW provided an incentive, so the cause marketing was donate your shoes and you get points in the loyalty program, which is a big deal for DSW customers. They actually saw increased traffic and people coming in and spending more money in the stores. So it's a great commercial win, which we're really proud to be a part of. And in that time, DSW customers have donated more than 2 million pairs of shoes. So it's been a huge win on the impact side for us as well. So when we think about cause marketing, those are obvious customer facing ones, but also internally cause marketing more and more is a way to engage employees. So for us with DSW, the next step is they are traveling with their employees and customers to experience now what it's like to give shoes and see those entrepreneurs in action. So we've touched every part of the equation and that is the ideal way for cost marketing to work. I don't know that Souls for Souls has that much influence on the demographic. It's more about the retail partner that they're driving that. But what we're finding is two things. We have a big group of people in the middle, maybe in their 40s, mostly women, especially who have kids. They have kids who are growing out of shoes fast. They have families that are growing, so they're trying to figure it out. The other thing that we're seeing more and more on cause marketing is that the younger millennial and Gen Z customers really care about sustainability. And to the extent that we are able to help those companies tell that story, that their shoes aren't going into landfills, they're getting repurposed and reused, 
and turned into food, shelter, education. That is really powerful. For Souls for Souls, our reputation is everything. You know, our retail partners wouldn't touch us if we didn't have a good reputation. So the most important value is transparency. So you can see all of our financials, who's on our board, everything is public. So that's the outward facing piece. When we talk to our retail partners about, okay, this is how the program is gonna work, we go into a lot of detail about, these are the places that we work, these are some of the things that you might see, this is the things that can go wrong. We work in places where there's a lot of political instability, there's corruption, there's bribery. I mean, there are all these kinds of things that are a part of it. So we try to be really clear so that when things do happen, our partners aren't surprised. That's just as true internally. I came to Souls for Souls about seven years ago when there was a real crisis of trust. And I think we've learned from that that transparency is the foundation for every other kind of value, including your reputation. And so for us, being willing to answer any question, go down any path, tell the story, tell all of the story, has allowed us to educate our partners. We learn about their business, they learn about ours in a way that when there is a bump in the road, it's a part of the process and it doesn't derail everything. For a long time, Souls for Souls has really been just focused on footwear and apparel, and that's for obvious reasons. But what we're learning more and more is uh, there's a much broader circle of companies. They might be in the ecosystem of retail. They might be a tech company. They might be a vendor of some kind. But all these companies have a couple of common problems. They have a younger workforce who wants to know purpose. They want to have much more experiential relationship with things and not just understand the financial component and everybody has stuff in their closet that they aren't using. All of us have that. So we're finding that there are lots of potential companies and partners who can engage with us that we didn't think about three or four years ago. So I would like to invite anyone who has employees, who wants to engage their customers, who has products or services. There's a way that we can take your expertise and put it to work for people who really, really want to work hard but just need a better opportunity. If you want to travel, we can make that very visible through a hands-on experience. But we can also just do things as simple as, let's do a shoe drive into your company so you can help clean out your closet and get that stuff that's taking up space and turn it into really beneficial outcomes for people in the developing world.